quick video here for Mac users on how to use the XPDF tool to extract the text out of an indexed PDF file. Let's take a look here. So let's go, let's start here. So I have this PDF file, emma.pdf, sitting on my hard drive. And here it is. It's the full novel of Emma by Jane Austen in PDF format. And I can tell that these, this file is indexed already because I can select with my cursor and it, it selects text, right? I can do control F or command F and search for whatever word and it's finding those words. Okay, so that tells me that it's indexed. That's good, so I wanna get the text out of there. <clears throat> so I, I just simply Google X PDF, those four characters, and go to the downloads tab of this um, website. And then um, you're looking for the command line tools, the XPDF command line tools, not the reader, not the other thing. The second option here under downloads and you grab the Mac version. So you download it and um, unzip it, which I've already done. And it created a folder right here on my hard drive called the XPDF tools, Mac, and then the version number. And within that directory, there is a bin 64 directory. And within that there are nine tools, one of which is PDF to text. That's the one I want to use. Okay. That's good. Um, and then also the pathway to the PDF file. I need to know the pathway to that executable file. That, that PDF to text right there is called an executable file. You can see over here it says Unix executable file. That's what that is. By the way, on Windows, those executable files have a .exe extension on the file name. <clears throat> but that is not the case with Mac nor with Linux. Okay, so that is the pathway to that point, to that file there. I also need to know the pathway to the PDF file on my hard drive. Now on my hard drive, it's in Documents, Link360, Jane Austen, and then there is Emma.pdf, the one I showed you a second ago in the viewer. Okay. Let me double check. I'm sharing my screen. Sure, I'm good. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to come down to wherever, uh, come down here to Applications. My hard drive is right here. If you're in the viewer, in the, the finder, it, you may have an Applications menu here as well. There in Viewer, or excuse me, Finder. It may be down here as well. Um, but you're going to come down to Utilities. Again, you could do it from here, from the finder, or down here. If I just go down to utilities, there's the same thing. It's the same, going to the same place. And then within utilities, I have a terminal, terminal.app. See that? It's also sitting right there. So either one would open up the same thing. So if I double click it, opens it up. There we go. Okay. Um, so here I have a terminal window. It's probably, when you open it up, it's probably really small like that. I'm making it very big for pedagogical purposes here in this video. And PD, uh, PWD tells me what the working directory is, the current working directory, print working directory. And right now I'm sitting in this directory on my hard drive. And if I were to come back over to viewer, that is this directory right here. So within that directory, I have the XPDF tools directory. I also have documents. So that's good to know. So the first thing you do, um, the first thing you write here with this on the, in the command line is PDF, uh, XPDF. Let me just, I did that real quick without explaining. So I, I typed PD, um, XPD and then I clicked the tab key on my keyboard to have it autofill the rest of that pathway for me. And I typed BI tab in order to have it autofill the rest of that pathway for me. PDF to text tab there. I got When I got down to the E, I pushed tab. So the first thing I have there is the pathway from where I currently am, which is in my users directory. Within that directory, I'm in EKB5, my net ID. And I'm saying, okay, from there, go into this directory. And once you're in that directory, go into this directory called bin64. And within that directory, you should find an executable file called PDF to text. Okay. And then... <clears throat> We need the pathway to the, the PDF file, which is in documents, ling 360, 360, Jane, I'm going to do JA tab, forward slash, and then capital E, lowercase m, tab, and I got the pathway now here, down to, all the way down to the PDF file. So just to review, 
I'm currently sitting in this directory that has both the XPDF um, tools Mac directory as well as the documents directory. And the first thing I pass in here is the pathway from the current working directory down to the PDF to text executable file. Then I have a space. Then I have the pathway to the PDF file right here, emma.pdf. And when I click enter, I'll click enter. It says, this is Mac OS talking to me now. And Mac OS says, hey, PDF to text cannot be open because the developer cannot be identified or verified. This is Mac OS's or Apple's attempts to keep malicious, bad software from ruining your computer. So we cancel, don't move to trash, just cancel. That button, cancel. And then we need to come over to our system settings. A couple ways to get there on Mac. Um, here is the icon down here, looks like a gear you know, box. It says system settings right there. If I click on that, I get this window. If you don't see that on your dock, you can come up to the Apple uh, on your Mac, the top left Apple there. And also it, it, right there it says system settings. This gives you, it gives you the same place. Okay, within here, I have the newest version of Mac OS. If you have an earlier version, it may be a little bit different, but look for privacy and security. See right there, it says privacy and security. Look for that option in the version of Mac you have. And if you scroll down here a bit, right here it says, hey, PDF to text was blocked from use because it is not from an identified developer. There's a button that says allow anyway. So I say allow anyway, I trust this stuff and it's asking for my password on this computer. So it really wants to be sure that I know what I'm doing. I'm accepting the risk of using software that Apple doesn't, uh, hasn't verified. Okay, good. So now I'll come back to my terminal window over here and I'll push the up arrow on my keyboard once to get the previous command, which is what we just talked about. I push enter on my keyboard and it says, Mac OS cannot verify the developer of PDF to text. Are you sure you want to open it? I say, yes, I really am very sure. So I say open. And after a second or two, it finishes there. And let me just use my finder to go back over to Jane Austen. Let's see, uh, I got documents there, Lang360 there, Jane Austen there. And now I do indeed have an emma.txt sitting right next to the emma.pdf file. If I open that up and just look at it, this is all the text that was in the PDF file. Emma Woodhouse, Handsome, Clever, and Rich by Jane Austen, right there. Again, this is simply just extracting out the text from that PDF file that was sitting right here. And just to verify that, we can look at the first. Let me jump up a little bit quicker than I am. <clears throat> there she is, Emma Woodhouse, handsome, clever, and rich. Anyway, just grabbed all the text out of this PDF file and put it into a TXT file over here. It just puts it right, it just puts it in the same directory as where it found the um, PDF file. That's great. Now I want to try this in Python. So let's open up PyCharm. We have a file here named main.py. We need to import the subprocess uh, module as well as OS. We're going to have to import OS. The first thing I want to do is navigate to the directory that has, let me jump back over here for a second, that has the XPDF tools directory as well as documents. If you remember back in Finder, that is my net idea here. The EKB5 directory has those two directories. It has documents right there and it has XPDF right there. And so I um, <clears throat> need to navigate to that point here like this. Okay, terrific. I can just run this to double check. There's no problems. Run the main. Xcode zero, that means no problems. Good. And then um, at this point, what I need to do is create a command. I'll just create a variable that's holding a string. And what I want it to hold is this command we just used back over here in the terminal window. I'm just gonna highlight it, command C to copy it, come back over here and paste it between two double quotes or single quotes would work as well. And again, it's, this is simply the command we just used a second ago in the terminal window to create a, a TXT file of Emma. Now let's go back over there to um, this point. Let's see, Jane Austen. So here is the uh, emma.txt that was created a second ago from the terminal window. I just want to delete it. I just want to erase it and send it to the trash so that we can do this again over in Python. So we can see now that there's no emma.txt, it's just the emma.pdf right there. Okay. 
And then once you say that to some variable, you don't have to, but that's, I like doing that. You say sub process. You can see that PyCharm is sensing what I'm doing. So I'll accept that suggestion with tab on my keyboard dot run open parentheses and I'll pass in the variable holding the um, command and then I do a comma and I do shell equals equal sign true with a capital T that capital T is important um, there and now if I run it if I run the script there's a couple ways the keyboard shortcut I could use you could come down here and do that option and find the name of the file that you're looking at right now which is main so I'll do that after about a second or two there, it should have created out here. Yeah, it did create out here another uh, Emma.txt. So that's how you do this in Python. Now you're like, why would you do that if you only want to do that one file? You can just throw that into the command line terminal rather than have to write all this other stuff. You're absolutely right. But if you have a file, if you have a directory with like 100 or 1,000 PDF files that you want to extract all the text out of, at that point, you're going to want to use Python so that you could get the file names, you know, get the file names with a command, and then you loop over for, you know, current file name and all the file names. And then here you would do the subprocess dot run stuff. So that those few lines right there would, you know, loop over the thousand PDF files or the whatever number of PDF files you have. So you don't have to do it one by one. You'd have to do a little bit of string concatenation to, to um, change this name right there. Um, but anyway, the point is that if you can do it in Python, then you can do it over many files with a for loop um, rather than trying to do it one by one. So that's the reason you want to do it in Python. Okay, so that is the video. See you next time.